mirror, mirror on the wall, whose tutorials are best of all? Definitely not yours, bro. Why do you have to be such an ass? You're the ass. Go start the show. Fine. Hmm. Yo, yo, everybody. I'm Alex. This is Elements of Film. Thanks for being here. In this episode of Let's Get Tutorialized, I've got a neat little trick to show you. I call it the mirror technique. Some people call it the mirror technique. Other people also call it the mirror technique. And it's called the mirror technique. And you've seen it in such amazing work like this. And this. And this. That's right, I've also included this technique in our Elements of Film film kit number two, Flowers and Bees, which you can buy right now at elementsoffilm.com, link down below. Before we get started, if you want to play along at home, I encourage you to do so. You can head over to elementsoffilm.com, tutorials, and I'll post a link with the clips that I'm using in this tutorial, which you can download for free. They are 4K ProRes clips, link down below. All right, and now let's get started. So here we are in Premiere. I've got my three clips already imported and I'm gonna start a new sequence. 1920 by 1080 at 24p. And then let's check out these clips that we're about to bring into the 1080 timeline. As you can see, they are 4K clips. 4096 by 2160. So they're gonna be bigger than the timeline in which we're working, which that's totally cool. There are some benefits to that, which I'll show you in just a second. So let's drag our clip in we get a message telling us that the clip settings don't match our sequence settings, which is totally cool. Do we want to change the sequence to match the clip or do we want to keep the sequence as it is? Well, we want to keep the sequence as it is. And here's why. So let's keep settings, let's drop it in there. And now you can see that the clip is bigger than the sequence itself. So that gives us some leeway to reframe the shot if we want to, as we can move, we can reposition the the shot this way, reposition it that way, we can scale down, we can scale up. There's a lot of leeway to reframe the shot, which is a pretty neat thing to have. And it's something that's gonna come in handy here in just a sec. And let's go ahead and just check out the clip real quick. It's kinda smooth, it's kinda slow-mo smooth, but it's also a little handheld slow-mo smooth, which has a, you know some bumps and some knickknacks and some things that kind of, kind of shake it up. Now, if we wanted to, we could apply the mirror effect now to the clip. And, and just be done with it and call it a day. Totally cool. But for me personally, um, I think this technique is best used when the footage is super buttery smooth. Uh, to me, it looks more elegant, um, more polished, more refined. It just it just ups it up a little bit. It gives it a little more, mm, a little more. Ooh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna warp stabilize the clip and that'll kind of smooth out the bumps a little bit in the movement of the footage. But if we were to do it right now, we would get an error. Let me show you. So I'll take the warp stabilize effect. It's under video effects, distort, warp stabilize. There we go. We'll drop it on the footage and it gives us this error message. It tells us that the, the clip and the sequence settings have to match for this to work. Cool, no problem. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna nest this clip. And essentially what that is, is if, if you're familiar with After Effects, it's the same principle as like pre-comping. Um, because sometimes you wanna apply effects, multiple effects onto one clip, and sometimes those effects don't play well together. So we're gonna do the same thing here. We're gonna take our footage and we're gonna right click, we're gonna go nest, and then we're gonna name it something else. And now we've got a sequence within a sequence kind of like Inception. It's a sequence within a sequence, within a sequence, within a sequence, within a sequence, but the difference is with Premiere, you can nest all you want and you can go deep, 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 and you're gonna be fine. It's not gonna be, it's not gonna be creepy. So now we're gonna double click on this nested sequence and we're gonna go inside it. And um, this nested sequence inherited the properties of the previous sequence that it lived in, if that makes sense. Does it? Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. 
So we're gonna go inside this nested sequence and because our clip is a 4K clip, we're gonna have to make this new nested sequence a 4K sequence. So we can do that by going to sequence settings and then changing it to 4096 by 2160. So now that we have the 4K clip in the 4K timeline, now we can apply the warp stabilizer effect. So let's go get it, distort, then we'll get the warp stabilizer, we'll plop it in there, and now it's gonna analyze the footage and it's gonna do its wizard magic and it'll stabilize the clip for us. These settings are default right out of the box, no modifications, but that's essentially it. Now if we play it back, we can see that it's moving kind of buttery smooth. Pretty, pretty buttery. This is a pretty buttery smooth clip, which is awesome. And I'll show you a comparison between the unstabilized clip and the stabilized clip so you can see the difference. So now we've got our stabilized 4K clip. We can close this sequence and open up the previous sequence that has the nested sequence in it. There it is. And now we can go ahead and apply the mirror effect to this clip. We'll go to video effects, distort, mirror, and we'll plop it on there. Straight out of the gate, there's really nothing happening. Not until we start playing with this value. So now you can type in a different value. You can type in 90, 180, and you'll get different results. And now it's just a matter of your personal preference. What looks good to you? What do you like to see? What is it, what's the look you're trying to achieve? You get to play around and experiment and kind of figure that out for yourself. Um, and that's the fun part of all this, is just the playing and the experimenting and the getting your hands dirty and the just being in it and swimming around. That's, that's the fun part of all this stuff. And so that's essentially it. That's the mirror technique with a little bit of stabilization thrown in, a little bit of nesting thrown in. Those are kind of uh, concepts that you're gonna come across all the time and they're gonna make your edits better. They're gonna make your work better. And again, if you wanna play along at home and get these clips for free, they're 4K ProRes clips. You can go to elementsoffilm.com. I'll also put a link in the description. And if you wanna get the entire film kit, which I encourage you to do, go to elementsoffilm.com. Check out our film kits, you can buy over an hour's worth of footage, of raw footage, to play around with. Um, and to do whatever you want with. And to experiment and try out these techniques and try out other techniques and have some fun with it. Thank you for watching another episode of Let's Get Tutorialized. Um, Elementsoffilm.com. Hope you like this video. Come back for more. Like, subscribe. Like, subscribe. Tap the like, tickle the subscribe. Tap the like, tipple, tipple, tip. Go ahead and tipple that subscribe. Tipple it. Did you tipple it? Are you gonna tipple that subscribe? Okay, that's all I got for you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yes.